Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. It's Cole and Jay. So it's late summer and for us this is a very exciting time of the year because we are seeing a ton of butterfly activity out in our gardens and that's the main reason why we planted them this year so we have tons of butterflies for us to enjoy and to see fluttering around and it's just an awesome sight to see. We're going to kick today's video off by showing you some of the butterflies we have hanging out in the garden and then we're going to get into what's got us most excited right now. of butterflies show up to our garden this year and we really hope that you guys enjoyed seeing some of them if you love butterflies be sure to give this video a like but now let's go to the front of the house and let's show you something really amazing all right we're at the front of the house now and if you take a look behind jay you can see these tents behind her and what those are those are butterfly rearing tents we have been raising butterflies all summer long and right now we have more caterpillars in there than ever. I mean, yeah. it is insane. We have a couple of different species that we've been raising. We've raised eastern black swallowtails, which we don't have any caterpillars in here right now. We have a bunch of chrysalises. We have giant swallowtails, and then we have more monarchs in one of these tents than we have ever had, yeah. ever it's at one crazy. time. With it being late in the year, we want to show you this because we are starting to run out of milkweed out in our flower yeah. bed, and the caterpillar population is starting to go down. So we want to show you this before this all goes away because it is really, really amazing. So let's take a look inside these tents and show you guys the caterpillars we're raising. And eventually we will show you guys the butterflies they turn into. So in this tent, we have our giant swallowtail caterpillars. I'm going to pull it out so you guys can see it a little bit better. But here they are. This is our first year having giant swallowtails. So this is really exciting. This is the plant rue. And we planted a bunch of this year, and we are very happy that we were able to get some caterpillars. Yeah, if you take a look at it, here's a really big guy right here, and he is in his final instar, and is most likely going to change to a chrysalis today. And then take a look, here's some smaller guys. What's really cool about giant swallowtails is they have amazing camouflage. I mean, take a look at that guy. Ooh. What does he look like to you? I Listen, know. What, what do you think it looks like? He looks like bird poop. Yep, looks exactly <laughs> like a bird turd on a plant. Nothing is going to want to mess with that caterpillar because of that. And if you do mess with them, they produce this really nasty smell. Yeah. And they also have these weird little antenna structures that stick out of their face. Kind of makes them look more intimidating too. So those are the giant swallowtails. Now let's show you guys the main attraction. You ready, Jay? I'm ready. Y'all ready, guys? Oh, wow. Goodness. Inside of this tent, we have been rearing monarch butterfly caterpillars there's not very many caterpillars left in here we have just a little bit of milkweed in this tent and uh but if you look up at the top the reason why we don't have much milkweed left is because they have all changed into chrysalises i can't even begin to count how many are up there i'm thinking around there's 200 it doesn't look like it from afar but when you start counting it you're like wow there's so many in there yeah close to 200 chrysalises inside of this tent and within the next seven to ten days, maybe, maybe even sooner, because some of them went up there a little bit sooner, we're going to start seeing a ton of monarch butterflies emerge. And there's no telling how many chrysalises are out and about, like, in the garden and random places, because we weren't able to collect all the caterpillars. There was just so many of them. But we like to collect as many as possible to help th keep them protected from predators. So what we're going to do today is we're going to take you guys out in the garden. We're going to try to find some caterpillars, and we're going to show you guys the process in which we collect them and then rear them from caterpillar to adult. I cannot wait to see these guys come out. And we will <laughs> definitely be showing you the day when these guys start to emerge. It's gonna be epic. All right, so here's what is left of our milkweed stand. As you can see, it's been munched on pretty heavily. We have several different varieties in here. We have tropicals, we have butterfly weed, we have swamp milkweed, commons. They didn't really pick a favor. They pretty much just ate all of it. And what we'll do here in the next couple weeks is actually cut down what's left of the tropical milkweed because it'll continue to grow out and uh, the butterflies will continue to try to lay eggs on it late in the season. And we don't really want that. So it's been good for us up until now, but it's time to go. But if you look right here, we still have these milkweed plants here. This is called balloon milkweed. It makes these really weird seed pods on it. It's kind of hidden in here. 
But anyways, it's still got some leaves on it. It was our biggest and one of our most prolific milkweeds of the year. And there are still some caterpillars on it, believe it or not. And basically we are relying on this plant to sustain what is left of the caterpillars out here. So what we will do is we will go in here and we will collect these caterpillars. I'll pull this one off so I can show you guys. Here's a little caterpillar right here. Now normally whenever we're collecting caterpillars off our milkweed to rear inside of the tent, we like to get them when they're either eggs or when they're very small caterpillars. This reduces the chance of them being parasitized by the tachinid fly. But in this scenario, when we don't collect them as smaller individuals, we like to get them anyways as big sized caterpillars. That's just because they're more susceptible to being eaten by wasps or getting stuck by stink bugs. I mean, if you take a look over here, where's that guy at? Yeah, you can see it right here. See, so if you take a look at this guy, he was most likely predated upon by a stink bug. They'll just stick the proboscis in and just suck all their insides out. It's kind of sad. I wish we would have got to that caterpillar sooner, but we're going to try to get as many of these caterpillars out here today so that doesn't happen anymore. Alright, we're going to place these caterpillars inside of this tent while we go gather some milkweed. That way they don't fall out of the bowl, fall into the ground. And yeah, we're just going to zip it up. Let's go get them some food. Since milkweed is very toxic, Preggy J is not really supposed to be handling the milkweed. So I'm going to cut us off some nice pieces and we're going to take them there and feed the caterpillars. All right, we've got a Gatorade bottle in here full of water and we're gonna pack it tight with milkweed so that the caterpillars can't fall in and drown. We got a lot of milkweed, so it'll seal up nicely. All right, that all looks really, really good. We got a bunch of milkweed in there. Hopefully that'll be enough, but if I know monarch caterpillars the way I do, the way I think I do, they'll probably have it all mowed down by the end of the day and I'll have to go back out there and get some more. But that's okay. This is a very safe home for these caterpillars to continue carrying out their life cycle. And we are excited to see how many of these caterpillars fully undergo metamorphosis and change to beautiful monarch butterflies. The large and brightly colored monarch butterfly is easily one of the most recognizable butterfly species in North America. Their deep orange colored wings laced with black veins and white spots along the margins make them a spectacular sight to see in the garden. Monarchs undergo an incredible life cycle and are famous for their long distance migrations where they gather by the millions at overwintering sites in Southern California and Mexico. The monarch life cycle begins at their overwintering grounds. In the spring, monarchs begin their journey northward and mate. Female monarchs then search for milkweed plants where they will lay between 300 to 500 eggs on the leaves. Most adult monarchs only live for a few weeks. They spend their time searching for nectar-rich flowers, for mates, and for milkweed to lay their eggs on. It takes many generations of monarchs to repopulate North America, but it is the last generation that hatches late in the summer that will make the long fall migration. This generation can live upwards of eight months. A few days after a monarch lays her eggs, tiny caterpillars will emerge. Immediately after hatching, the caterpillars begin to eat the milkweed and will eat non-stop for about two weeks. The colorful caterpillars have two antenna-like structures at each end of their body and are striped with yellow, black, and white bands. The caterpillars take in and store glycoside toxins from the milkweed plant that they eat. And in turn, the bright colors on the caterpillar's body are expressed as a defense strategy called aposematism. This basically alerts the predators that they are not worth eating because they are toxic and taste bad. However, these warning colors do not always work, as they are often consumed by wasps, stink bugs, and parasitized by tachinid flies. Before turning into a chrysalis, the caterpillars spin up a silky anchor point and hang upside down in a J shape. It is here where the caterpillar will shed its skin for the final time and transform into a green chrysalis. Around two weeks later, metamorphosis will complete and the adult butterfly emerges.
Monarch butterflies were once a very common sight across the country. Unfortunately, the monarch population has declined by approximately 90% since the 1990s, and there are several variables that affect them. They face habitat loss and fragmentation in the U.S. and Mexico. They also suffer from pesticide and herbicide usage, which kills monarchs and the milkweed they need to survive. Climate change is another threat to their survival. It alters the timing of their migration and has led to unsteady weather patterns that pose great risks to monarchs during their migration and while overwintering. An easy way to help monarch populations is by planting a pesticide-free butterfly garden filled with native milkweed and nectar-rich plants. There is also the option to plant non-native varieties like tropical milkweed that monarchs really enjoy, but it is important in the southern states to remember to cut it down later in the year to prevent monarchs from trying to use it instead of migrating. Planting milkweed gives you the greatest chance to have visiting monarchs and the opportunity to watch them undergo their life cycle. Take a look at all of these monarchs, guys. We've had so many emerge from their chrysalis this morning. This is a day that we've been anticipating for quite some time now, and it appears that they have fully pumped their wings up and are ready to be released out into the wild. 